Warning. This is not your safe space. Move along, now. Yamana describes the guy as a heavy set black male in his 30s, wearing a hat, driving a late model black Ford Crown Victoria. I always told him to record. He records everything. A man dragging the body of a partially clothed woman near a busy road in broad daylight. The self defense killing is now getting a closer look after police found the victim recorded his own. And I'm murder. scared. I don't like to come outside. That could have been I me. I was in shock and I was holding my face. I thought I got shot by a real gun. Please for water and asked to hug his daughter. She shoots him several more times killing him in his apartment on Lake Ridge Parkway, December 29th. I seen a guy that brought a body from out of nowhere and dropped her right there. Then he tried to it run. Was like I was being nasty or anything. I just took his word and I guess he wasn't satisfied with the answer he had gotten. I'm scared. I don't like to come outside. That could have been me. 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 Damn! Now you too censored. Now you too censored. I'm mad as hell right now. Yes, I am. Viewer discretion. Mama Black. This program contains language and sequences some viewers may find disturbing. Right. New at noon, Richland County officials say a 14-year-old has died after a weekend shooting on St. Andrews Road. Officials say Taekwon Taylor died at the scene after being shot in the upper body on the 1500 block of St. Andrews Road Sunday morning. Deputies say another person was also shot. There's no update on that person's condition. It's a story we're actively following and we'll have much more this afternoon. Now another one you'll see only here on CBS 46. We first told you about allegations of financial misconduct within the North Paulding High School Touchdown Club last week. But as CBS 46 reporter Bo Beth Yates tells us, the story continues to evolve. In our original story, a whistleblower came out documenting some questionable financial concerns with the North Paulding High Touchdown Club. And since that story aired, now others associated with the organization are speaking out. Well, from what I've seen and the evidence that I've seen, it clearly looks like someone is stealing. First, the accusations were involving bank deposits being shorted, but now a second whistleblower, whose identity is also being disguised out of fear of retribution, tells us the allegations go beyond bank deposits to include missing money from cash fundraisers. You buy these goods, and let's say you mark them up 50%. You would think that at the end of the season or whatever, that he would have 50% more in revenue, but when you look at the books, the, that's not the case. The Touchdown Club January meeting also documents the discrepancy. Just look at this line which states it is not clear about if concessions made or lost money this season. And our latest whistleblower says the current financial practices made it easy for funds and the items for sale to just disappear. I don't think that the goods in the concession stand were ever inventoried. Looking from the outside in, you would think that one, either somebody is stealing from the cash drawer or someone is stealing the goods and using them, you know, elsewhere or something like that. And there's more. You know, people taking money home and counting it later by themselves, um, people reimbursing themselves out of the cash drawer, so to speak. And when questions were raised about the missing money, our whistleblower says an alleged cover-up began. Look at this line from the club's meeting minutes. It states the board has been dissolved and now is moving to a transitional board. I think that occurred simply uh, as a tool to get rid of people on the board that, uh, that they didn't want on the board because they were being vocal about trying to find out what was happening with the finances. We reached out to the Paulding School District to get comment, but they were unavailable. But they did tell us they will be sending a letter to the Touchdown Club, directing them to conduct an independent audit. They have also notified law enforcement and says depending on the outcome of that audit, they may take action. Bo Beth Yates, CBS 46 News. The victim in this case tells us she was working at this fast food restaurant when the unthinkable happened. A customer out of control targeting her with a weapon. These disturbing images posted to Facebook show the painful aftermath of a sinister paintball attack. I was in shock and I was holding my face. I thought I got shot by a real gun. Too afraid to give us her full name, this drive-thru worker goes by Kivana. He drove up and I opened the window 
slightly halfway to take his money and he just shot me with a paintball gun and he drove off. Kivana also recalls the reason for the brutal attack that left her with a wound only inches from her eye. She says the paintball pistol packing punk who did this was furious the frappe machine was out of order. It wasn't like I was being nasty or anything. I just took his order and I guess he wasn't satisfied with the answer he had gotten. It all happened at 1.30 a.m. here at Michigan and Gully. Kivana describes the guy as a heavy-set black male in his 30s, wearing a hat, driving a late-model black Ford Crown Victoria. She hopes Dearborn cops arrest the supersized scum before he targets someone else. You're going to get what's coming to you. That's all. You know, you read what you sow. So he's going to get it real good. Thankfully, Kivana is expected to make a full recovery from her injuries. However, she has not decided if she'll be returning to her job here at McDonald's. From Dearborn, Simon Chaquette, 7 Action News. Apparent self-defense killing is now getting a closer look after police found the victim recorded his own murder. Channel 2's Tom Jones live in Clayton County. Tom, the victim's mother, believes the defendant is trying to build a battered woman's defense, but she insists her son never abused his killer. And just the mother of Raheem Grant and her attorneys here say that defense won't hold water because, A, they say he never abused Sierra Harp, the mother of his child, and, B, they say... Based on the video he recorded of the murder, that there he was no threat to her. I always told him to record. He records everything. 28-year-old Raheem Grant took his mother's advice and ended up recording his own murder. It's a series of events that has stunned his mother's attorneys. The man began to video his own murder. It's horrible and in front of his daughter. The video shows a bloody Grant saying his three-year-old daughter's mother had just stabbed him. As he's recording, Clayton County Police say 29-year-old Sierra Harp shoots him. When he pleads for water and asks to hug his daughter, she shoots him several more times, killing him in his apartment on Lake Ridge Parkway, December 29th. It's unbelievable. Uh, there's, there's no way uh, anybody would believe this. Police say they had no idea about the video until Harp gave them the code to Grant's phone. Officers say in the video, you see Harp pick the phone up and the video stops, but the recording continues. When he was recording, she might have thought she was turning the button <laughs> off. In the video, police say Harp screams that Grant had been beating her for four years. Bryson's attorney thinks the battered woman defense won't hold up in court. He was not a threat, and she kept killing him. Bryson says Harp was obsessed with her son. What hurts is, she says, she always tried to help her. No, I treated her like a daughter. I really did. I treated her like a daughter, like family. And Harp is being held without bond. Police say when they arrived that Harp did have stab wounds, but Bryson uh, doesn't think that her son inflicted those wounds. We're live in Clayton County. Tom Jones, tell him to ask. The video posted to Facebook is horrific, and we've blurred most of it. A man dragging the body of a partially clothed woman near a busy road in broad daylight. And I'm scared. I don't like to come outside. That could have been me. It was Elizabeth Strickland's first day working at the Royal Car Wash on Plymouth and Winthrop on the west side. At first, she didn't think twice as this man walked by. We weren't really paying no attention because I know he's kind of off until we seen a naked lady. Strickland says she will never forget what she witnessed Monday afternoon. I seen a guy that brought a body from out of nowhere and dropped her right there. Then he tried to run. She says he took off down the alley toward a nearby gas station. And I flagged the police down and the police got him. He tried to run, but I seen him drop a body right there yesterday. And I'm glad they got him because I pointed him out. I'm glad they got him. The victim is a 58-year-old mother of two and may be homeless. Police say she died from trauma to the body. Oh, she ran out, she was naked, and it was sad. Detroit police believe the man killed the woman before being recorded moving her body. I feel bad. Real bad. And I feel lost for the family.
always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Also, follow us on the usual media for more interesting information. Channel moderators are Jer Shax and Michael Thomas. Thanks for your diligence and dedication. Fight the asses! <laughs>